Hi, are you looking for beginner data projects? Well, you've come to the right place. Today, we're going to talk through seven beginner data projects that you can build today. And all of them are going to come with full code in a Jupyter Notebook and a full video walkthrough that you can use to build the project step by step. So why build projects? Projects are a great way to build your portfolio to impress data science interviewers. They're also a good way to learn a topic and synthesize all of your skills. Projects are also fun. Some of the projects we'll be talking through today involve things like predicting sports scores, or predicting the stock market, or even building a movie recommendation system. Projects that are really in interesting and engaging, and a good use of your data skills. So let's dive in and walk through these projects. All of these projects that we talk about today are going to come with full code, full video walkthroughs, and next steps. So you'll know exactly how to build them, and if you get lost or stuck, you can always consult the video walkthrough. And the next steps are great for your portfolio because you can continue building these projects out on your own. So these projects are gonna be a great way to learn and a great way to build your project portfolio. We're gonna build all of these projects in Python using Jupyter. And I'm gonna use the Jupyter Lab IDE, but you can also use Jupyter Notebook and Google Colab. Let's talk about the first project of the seven that we'll talk about today. The first project is going to be building a book recommendation system. I don't know about you, but I often end up in a situation where I don't know what to read next, and all of the recommendations that I get on Amazon just aren't very good. So I built this book recommendation system that you can also build to give yourself interesting book recommendations. So we're gonna use data that was scraped from Goodreads, and these data files are actually very, very large, multiple gigabytes. So we work with the data in a special way where we read the data line by line, which makes sure that even if we don't have a very, very powerful computer, we can still actually build this project. So we start out by reading the data in and then finding users who have similar tastes in books to us. And we define which books we like based off of our Goodreads history. If you don't use Goodreads, you can also manually define which books you like. Then we use a collaborative filtering system to find people who have similar taste in books to us, and we find all of the books that they also liked. And this results in a list of book recommendations that we then score and rank. And we end up with a nice set of book recommendations, including covers of the books, that we can then actually start reading. So I've actually read a lot of the books that were recommended to me, and I found the recommendations really useful. Maybe you will also. As you can see from this list, my taste pretty heavily leans towards fantasy and sci-fi, and it can be hard to find good books that I haven't read. Some of these I'd actually read before the recommendations popped up, some of these I had not but it is always nice to get good book recommendations. And the video walkthrough and the code will be linked in the description for this project. So you can check there to get a full notebook and you also to just get a full walkthrough that'll take you through writing all of this code and all of the steps so you won't be lost. Let's jump over to our second project, which is going to be forecasting the weather. And this one is cool because you'll actually be able to download a data set in your local area and forecast your local weather using this technique. In this project, we start out by downloading a CSV file with our local weather. So I live in Oakland, so I actually downloaded a CSV file of Oakland weather, but there are, is weather available for most places in the US and a lot of international locations as well, especially if you live near an airport. So the full walkthrough and full code give you instructions on how to do that. And then we do a little bit of exploration. So this is time series data. So every day is a different weather observation. And what we try to do is using this historical data, predict future weather. So what's gonna to happen tomorrow based on what happened over the last 10 years. So we do some data cleaning just to get the data ready for machine learning. And then we can make an interesting plot that shows minimum and maximum temperature by day. And then we actually apply some machine learning 
we start out by splitting up our data, and then we apply a ridge regression to actually predict the future temperature based on historic temperature. And we end up with this nice plot, which shows the actual temperatures that were measured and the predictions that we forecasted. And what we're using is something called backtesting, which enables us to make predictions on historical data and see how accurate our machine learning model is. We're then able to add in some more predictors to our model and improve its accuracy. So you can see slightly more accurate predictions on this graph. And we end with some next steps that you can use to keep improving this model on your own. And as always, the full code and full video walkthrough for this are available in the description. The next project is a fun one. It's predicting the NBA MVP based on historical stats and historical MVP voting data. So this is using machine learning to make predictions. It also involves web scraping to scrape historical NBA stats and process them effectively. So in this project, as I mentioned, we first start by scraping some historical stats, both on who won MVP and on player and team stats. So you can see that we're able to parse and extract those stats from a website and then pull them into a pandas data frame. We then clean up the data and get it ready for machine learning. So you can see here is a table indicating how many MVP votes each player got in each year. This is part of our data cleaning. We go through this table and we do some cleanup and combine it with our other data, our player and our team data. And then we end by actually making predictions and seeing how accurate those predictions were. So we're able to use historical MVP voting to actually see how accurate our predictions were. And we again use backtesting to test our predictions in the past and see how accurate our algorithm was. So this is a really fun project and it basically involves every data science concept. So you get really far by doing this project. And like before, the full code and full video walkthrough are available in the description. All right. Well, we recommended some books before. Now let's recommend movies. So the cool thing about this is it's actually a real time system. So you're able to type in the name of a movie and immediately see some recommendations. And in this project, we're working with something called a movie lens data set, which actually has 25 million different movie reviews. So we use this to recommend movies that we might like. So we start out just exploring and cleaning the data and then building a search function that can actually search for a movie title. Then we again build a collaborative filtering system that can actually recommend movies based on who liked the movie that we also liked. So if someone liked the same movie as us, we look for the movies they liked and then show them as recommendations. But we need to rank those recommendations properly to make sure that the one that we would like the most is at the top. So we do a lot of just reshaping and scoring of the data to actually ensure that we get the right recommendations at the top. And then we end up with this box where we can type in the title of a movie, like The Avengers and the year it came out, 2012. And then we see the movie we searched for at the top. And then we see a list of recommendations below that. And you can see these are all movies that we probably would like if we liked The Avengers, right? One is a sequel. Uh, a lot of these are also movies that are related to The Avengers in some way. Or we could type in Toy Story, which came out in 1995, and we can get recommendations there as well. And these are pretty spot on recommendations. So this is a great way to find your next movie for movie night. And the full code and the full video walkthrough is in the description. The next project is a really fun one. It's predicting football match winners. And this involves a lot of web scraping, data cleaning, and machine learning. And by the end, we have a system where we can actually predict who will win football matches. Similarly to the NBA MVP project, we start out by scraping our data and pulling it into a pandas data frame. So you can see we have our match data here where each row is a match in the English Premier League. 
And the columns are different attributes of that match, like who played in the match, what the result was, et cetera. Then we clean that data up and combine it into a data frame that includes every team and a lot of different statistics. So every team in the EPL is here and we have stats on all of their matches. And then we do the fun part. We actually apply machine learning to all of this to predict who is going to win a match. And we end up with a data frame which shows the actual result of the match and what we predicted. It's not 100% accurate, but we end with some next steps that you can use to actually make this more accurate and predict wins, losses, and also draws if you want. We, in this model, only predict wins and losses, but you could also predict draws or predict spreads as well if you wanted to. So this is a really fun project, and it uses almost every data science skill. And like before, full code and the full walkthrough are in the description. So the next project uses deep learning to classify images. It's a fun project. It will require a GPU, or you'll have to use Google Colab. So just be aware of that. And in this project, we classify which breed a dog is from its picture. And to do that, we use TensorFlow and Keras. So we load our images in, we do some cleanup on our images, and you can see one of the images here that we'll be using. And then we end up building a convolutional neural network to actually do the classification for us. And we go through a few steps where we add some complexity to the convolutional neural network, and we're able to track how accurate the model is on the training set and the validation set. And we're, we continue to make it more accurate, and we end with just this data frame that shows the predictions we made and the actual result that we got. And you can continue improving this model. There's a lot you can do on your own, and those next steps are included as well along with the full video walkthrough and full code in the description. This is a, a really fun project and a good introduction to deep learning. And the last project, and also a very fun project, is predicting the stock market. So given where the stock market has gone historically, can you predict the price tomorrow, the closing price? We start out by downloading data from the S&P 500 from 1950, so all the way at the beginning until now. So every day we have the open price, the high, low, then the close price. And then we do a little bit of data exploration. We really should have bought the S&P 500 index a few years ago, right? And then we do some data exploration and cleaning. And then we train a random forest classifier to actually predict what the price will be. And most importantly, we build a very robust backtesting system that can test how well our model did on historical data. So when you're predicting stock prices, you want to be really careful to backtest. Otherwise, your model can look amazing when you're training it and just work horribly in the real world. So you'll learn in this project how to really carefully backtest and how to make sure that your result is actually valid and accurate. And we walk through improving the model. And by the end, we're able to make predictions and see how accurate our predictions are. And like before, full code and full project walkthrough videos will be in the description for this. I hope you enjoyed walking through these seven projects. If you want to build them, all of these are suitable for beginners, and they require some Python knowledge and a little bit of Pandas knowledge. And if you want to learn how to do those, you can learn on DataQuest. We offer free courses for Python. And if you want to build any of these projects, as I mentioned, we're using Python, we're using Jupyter. And all of these projects come with full code, full video walkthroughs, and next steps. So you won't be lost, and you'll be able to easily figure out if you're stuck, how to get unstuck, and how to continue with the project. I hope you enjoy building these projects, and I hope they look great in your portfolio.